Hello and welcome to a different kind of video from me for once. In this video I'm doing the um, installation of sound into the Duchess, but she already has a ESU lock sound coder inside her, but I'm going to change her for a Zimmer one. Right, the um, sound I'm using to put in the Duchess is obviously a Zimmer one, and that's from YouTube's, because there's the sounds I put in a lot of my steam engines but the original sound that was in the Duchess was from Elysium Trains which I was never happy with so I had a reblown uh, at these trains which he put a really nice sound in for me there but the sound decoder from this one is going to go in my Duchess of Hamilton so I'll have two Duchesses with the sound but the reason this one's getting changed to this is because this sound is actually recording from the Duchess itself so that's the reason why this one is getting put in there now the speaker that's going inside it is one of these now I've never used one of these before and I've seen Graham at Lakeside um, and he's put one of these in his uh, A4 and it sounded really good with one of these because I normally use sugar cube um, speakers in a lot of my um, steam engines but I thought, well, I'll go with one of these inside the Duchess. Right, as you can see with the Duchess, she's fitted with um, li um, lights, smoke, and firebox flicker. So obviously I've got to connect up the right wires to the right slots, which I've done many times myself, because uh, I've done quite a few uh, engines with sound and uh, with sound and all the accessories myself but right over the YouTube's uh, stuff it tells you which wires go to which as you can see it's all the colour colours for the right wires which ones we need to go to which so for the accessories for the positive they all go to the blue and then for the white and yellow they're for your lights so when the loco is going forward so I was saying the but for being you would have two lights and you might put a red one on the rear for when she's going forward they go on the white wire so if she's going to go in reverse and you have a red lantern on the front and a white lantern on the rear you'll pop that on the yellow wire so right for the um, smoke unit I pop the um, negative onto the brown wire and then for the firebox flicker the other one goes on the green wire so that's what you do for the accessories <clears throat> you'll see it in better form once I start doing it so next time you see it I'll have all the um, workings off the um, shelf sorry and then you'll see underneath what it all looks like right as you can see uh, I've got the body off now so you can see all the wires and it's more easy explaining as you can see there's the accessories for the smoke unit so obviously that one goes to the purple wire but that would be connected to my brown wire on the uh, Zimmer so there for the front motion lights obviously they're connected to your white one and then all, you, and all the accessories so all everything on here goes to the blue wire as you can see and then that's the firebox flicker uh, wire there which goes down to there and then these two wires go off into the um, tender so uh, I'll start changing it all over in a second but as you can see it looks easy but it's really fiddly to do but luckily everything's been obviously been done for me so it's just a case of swapping the wires over Right, as you can see, it's all done now. That's the new uh, Zimmer decoder put in. Uh, that's the capacit capacitor there for the Stay Alive, which is fitted there. And then, obviously, all the wires reconnect to as they were. So that's the firebox flicker. And then that's for the lights. And then Obviously you've got the blue wire which goes all to the accessories and then and on the Zimmer one 
is the brown wire, which goes to the yellow wire for the um, smoke unit. Because you see on the ESU ones, the uh, accessories, because it's a purple wire, on this one it's the brown wire, like I said, which goes to the uh, smoke unit. Because the brown wire on the smoke unit goes to the positive, which goes to that. So that's all done. And then for the speaker wires, on the Zimmer ones, the purple, and they just go to your speakers. So I've just got to sort the tender one out in a minute, and then try and fit it all back together, and then hopefully it should work. Right, as you can see, she's all back together again. Everything works, all the testers, lights, smoke, and firebox flicker. Um, just one also quick thing, I had the capacitor in for the stay alive and she was fitted about here and she was very close to the smoke unit but I wasn't sure there would be enough room and there wasn't so obviously that's not connected so I'll just take the ends up on the uh, wires and that so I don't get any shorts but um, and then obviously the speaker's in the tender and she's fitted just up there with the um, speakers I would advise uh, just to stop shorts, because this is another one to fit in a, another engine, is to just put some black uh, insulation tape just from the other side and don't obviously put that because that's your speaker, so just uh, around there uh, over that bit so it doesn't cause any shorts in case it comes dislodged or anything. So on that front, right here's the uh, function seat as you can see. Uh, but just a quick mention, on my F4 it's not lights, it's the um, smoke unit. So when I press F4 the smoke unit comes on. Now F5 you can see is, means quick select. What that is, it's, it's changed the chuff rate. So obviously if you've got a light load it's just a normal chuffing noise. But if it's full of passengers for arm sakes it's a really heavy chuff. So you know you can hear the engine working hard on that. Right, I'll just uh, press F1 and then just give you a quick sound. So there she is. Nice little whistle. And there's the lights on, as you can see. Now I was going to put the tender one on, but I just decided not to bother doing that for today. And uh, just to just to change the uh, decoder over. So as you can see the lights going on and off. When I press F4, the smoke unit should come on in a few minutes. There we go. So that's uh, all nicely working. Just turn that off. Right, number three. There you go. There's a firebox flicker. Very nice. So, Set her off. Okay, quit. Then all that. Just passed F five, so you can hear the different rates of the noise on it. Like that one. And I just take it off again, F5, and then run again. You can hear the different sounds. Sometimes it's not noticeable. If I've got it on a higher speed. There you go. Right, that's it for that engine. I'm just going to sort the sound out in the Duchess of Hamilton. Yeah? This is the uh, engine uh, I'm doing. Like I say, it's the Duchess of Hamilton, so she's the streamlined one. So she's going to have the uh, dizzy, tra uh, dizzy trains 
uh, Dakota fitted inside her. So obviously uh, the uh, the speaker will be going in the tender. There will be no lights or anything fitted, but at a later date I'm going to just fit a, um, a smoke unit to her. So that will be all done on that one. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this one shouldn't take too long to do. Right, this is the old um, Dakota took out the Duchess of Sutherland. This is the ESU lock sound one. And this one's going in the Duchess of Hamilton. Right, as you can see there, uh, there's the brown wires. Just got to tint them. And then put some longer wires on for the speakers. Now the old wires are just very neatly put some black tape on them. They are cut down, you know, so oops. So um it's no copper but just, just protect it, just put some black tape on them. Right, here's the um glues uh I use for fitting the smoke units. Sometimes I use um this which um for the units and black tack. Now with this, it's all right using it, but you have to uh, through. Th explain a bit. When you put in the glue around the smoke unit, you just put a tiny little bit around, but you don't put it all the way around. Only half of it, because you've got to let the air um, flow through through the side to let the air get to it, so it doesn't overheat the um, obviously the unit. Cause it really does get very hot and it can damage your chimneys and you don't want melted chimneys because believe me I've done one and I've had to buy a metal one to put in its place so they're a bit faffy but if you're very careful I mean I've done quite a few now and I've only had one uh, miss up and that's because there wasn't any um, space where the glue was for that one so the other option is also like I say the black tack same principle just put a little bit round, obviously leave your gaps, so it leaves the air for the um, smoke unit, the heat to, uh, to go out. Also for the tools, you can see you need a little pin device, and that's when you're doing the lights, you know, at the front, and obviously um, in the tenders. So you just use a little, tiny little hole. It's just enough to fit you the wires through, and obviously to get, you know, just them neatly through. Because what I do is do two holes, you know, one for the top and one for the bottom. Because this one, uh, this is, obviously as you can see, it's a horizontal one. And this one goes on the back of your tenders. So like I say, two little holes and then you pop them through. And I think on the ones on for the buffer beam, I think you just do one hole. And then you just drill a nice little hole with your little pin vise and then you put the wires through. Now the wires when you're going obviously down on the buff beam on the tender and you put them underneath. Sometimes you use that or use um, super glue. Just tiny bit of super glue, hold the wires in place and then paint them black and then you don't see them. Now when you fit in the lights, sometimes you can use you only need a tiniest drop of super glue to hold them in place. Now some of mine I've not bothered because the when you poke the wires through, uh, the white ones they must hold it in place. So I've never um, sometimes bothered with it for that one. And obviously with the um, lights you can see there's a resistor and you must 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 put them on. And you put them on the positive because if you don't you blow it, and you don't want that to happen. And that's it. that's it for <coughs> how you basically you start off uh, sorting uh, accessories and uh, what you need for inside the uh, locos when you're doing it. Right, right, I'll just get on and start on the uh, dushes now. Well, as you can see now, <coughs> the dushes I'm to took the body off, so I just fitting it, just plug into that, uh, drill the hole. Uh, just grab it for the tender. Just it's just gonna just go in there and then uh, the speaker. 
obviously in, into there. But as you can see, there's a lot more room inside this one because obviously it's a lot a bit wider and there's plenty of room. So eventually, I'll put the smoke unit there. I'm not going to bother with the lights on this one because with, with the Duchess, they have them different uh, light lamp irons. Oops, here, yeah, so it's a bit more tricky because I think these are sprungs. Oh, they, oh, I don't have a big finger. Yeah, they sprung, you see. So I've never done one of these ones. So, but to be fair, the, the coronation. I think a lot better without the um, lamp, you know, the lights on. So I'm just going to do the um, smoke for this one, and then also I will put the lights on, a real light on the back. I think eventually on this one. So we'll get on then. Put the uh, decoder in this. Well, as you can see in front of you, this one's all done now. It's pretty well. They are pretty easy because you just plug in, um, plug it in, and then sort it all neatly in there. And then obviously, sort the wires out. And then goes into the uh, tender. Because when you fit in sounds in the steam locos, they are pretty simple. If they got if you got the room there, you can just I say most of the time you just plug it in. As you do with a standard one, and then you put the um, speaker any way you can. I mean, the good thing is uh, where I get from uh, YouTube is all different sizes of speakers. I mainly use uh, sugar cubes, and the sugar cubes are the, the green ones, and that uh, mainly for them. It just depends on what room there is. I mean, in this tender, there's bags of room. But in a 28X that I've got, there's only about that much room, so you have to get a small uh, cube and speaker. I say it all depends. But um, I've used the original one, what was used in the Duchess of Sutherland. So that one's in there, but at a later date, I'm going to change it to um, one like this. The same one I was just putting in the uh, Sutherland one. So that one, uh, I think will sound better with that in this one. Right, here's the um, sound sheet for this one. The, yeah, just this one uh, by Digitrains. As you can see, the other ones on here. Uh, the F14-15 uh, is for uh, firebox blow and um, smoke so that's it for that one well, I'll give you a listen to what it sounds like I'll just do a few whistles no, short whistle
Right, um, that's about it for this video. So, uh, so I hope you've enjoyed watching this one and it's given you a little bit of insight to uh, how to install um, sounds and into steam engines and what goes off with fitting the accessories and that. So uh, I hope you enjoy it and thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.